All right, so what would you do? How, how could you possibly recover if you're this Hannah Anderson young lady, 16 years old, you get picked up after cheerleading practice. Hey, what's going on? Nice to see you. What's going on? You know, she knows the, the guy who takes her, this DiMaggio guy, right? She's a family friend. Uh, and then she gets taken away. She sees what he's doing. He's covering up the car. They're going out into the wilderness in Idaho, um, and and she, he winds up being shot by by the FBI agents, mm -hmm. right? Then you get done. You come home and you find out. Wait, my mother and brother have both been killed. How do you possibly recover? Forget about being an adult. How would you recover if you were a sixteen-year-old little girl? I'm here to have that discussion with us uh, to figure this thing out is uh, someone who specializes in this sort of trauma. Uh, Dr. I, I'm going to kill her first name. All right, Dr. We're going to call you Dr. G, right? <laughs> yes, thank you. Can you help me with the first name, though? Sure. My name is Dr. Guyani De Silva. Guyani. Yes. I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist in right. Orange County. Yeah. I work at St. Joseph's Hospital. A and you, you, I don't know how common it is to, to deal with kids that have been kidnapped and then had this sort of trauma, but lots of violence and criminal things. And, you've dealt with these sorts of issues before. Absolutely, and as a child and lesson psychiatrist, I, this topic is so important. And poor Hannah, that she's gone through unimaginable, frightening, horrific experience, such as being kidnapped. Um, if she were to walk into my office, I would just be overwhelmed by her, right. uh, her level of trauma. And my, my main concern would be that she, um, that she'd be validated for her feelings and for the person that she is, that she's not just a kidnapped victim, but she's a girl. She's a 16-year-old girl who's been through trauma. She's been through a nightmare, right. really. Right. And yeah. she's, been, um, she's been the victim of a predator, a 40-year-old man who, um, like a falcon, just you know, swooped in right. and, and attacked her, right. took her yeah. for like a, like a little a mouse. But, but if you were her, and th this is what I keep thinking about, I've got three daughters, mm -hmm. who by the way were very, very scared because they all got the Amber Alerts on their cell phones. Mm -hmm. Sure. What I think to myself is, um, how could you trust anybody? I was just going to say that because this was a family friend and I think of all my parents' family friends and, and at that age at 16, you would trust an adult. To be like, oh sure, I'm just picking you up from practice. Now after this, I just wonder, how is she ever going to be able to trust somebody? How, how would you go to work on something like that? Well, that is uh, this a very important aspect of it. And it's true that relationships are going to be a little difficult for her. Um, it's a betrayal, a complete betrayal of trust uh, from a child uh, with adults who are supposed to take care of her and protect mm -hmm. her and not abuse her and not take advantage of her vulnerability and her, um, her innocence. And basically, he took that innocence away from her. And she's going to uh, need a lot of support from people, a lot of love from her family, which sounds like her father is very, very loving. Mm -hmm. And her grandparents, too, are, are loving to her. So she's going to, it, you know, it's going to be a balancing act between the people who truly love her and have been consistently loving to her versus this one experience with but, a man. But, but we, we are talking about this, this idea of how does she get back to life? How does she go back into relationships? How does she go back to school? But wait a second, not only was she the victim of kidnapping, and who knows what he may have done to her, by the way. Mm -hmm. We haven't even gotten to that part of it, right? Um, but when she comes home to find out that mom and brother have been killed by this guy, Okay. She's she's lost her mother and brother, and she probably saw this guy get shot and killed. I mean, how, listen, I keep thinking about these girls from Cleveland, the, the girls that were kidnapped and kept for 10 years. Yes. I would use them as an inspiration because they got out and they were ready to fight. Absolutely. Right, right. Yeah. Well, she's um, going to have to contend with a lot of um, bereavement and grief. Um, the trauma, she may have PTSD, which is a suspiciousness of people, uh, having difficulty uh, connecting with other people, um, being scared of noises and people, um, having re-experiences, yeah. flashbacks, nightmares, um, panic attacks, depression. Uh, she's got a lot to deal with. Um, how does she go back to having relationships? Well, it's going to be a very, very slow process. Sure. And um, she's going to, again, the support of people around her, um, being able to bounce back ideas, validating her feelings, that when she feels that creepy factor mm -hmm. in her gut, that she feels supported and that she feels confident that, you know what, I'm not going to go near that guy. He creeps me out. What he did was a predatory act. It wasn't me, it wasn't how, well, how I was feeling. Hannah should take um, confidence in that she was a normal teenager. You know, those pictures are beautiful. She's, you know, effusive and enthusiastic and so proud of herself. And I hope that she can get back to that and realize yeah. none of that played a role in why that man sought her out. I mean, he was deliberate. He was a, it's a criminal, it's a criminal right. act. 
um, to do what, she, what he did. To, and then to you hear about his past, too, exactly, with his with father, the father, and then his father so kind of done the same thing. It almost that's makes right. it, it's not as shocking, maybe. Right, and I don't know if that's a learned behavior. Right. Or there's some evidence that antisocial behavior um, is genetically linked also, so it could be part of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just horrible. It's horrible. It and I bet... You know, she might have had some clue of his creepy factor. Uh, apparently, he that had told her. That intuition coming in. That's right, the intuition. And he, I think he had told her that um, that he was interested in her about a year ago. That's creepy for right. a 15-year-old yeah. girl to hear that. And I don't know if she had told anybody about that. Um, usually, teenagers have a lot of shame about that and feel like maybe I caused that somehow. And um, they also have that feeling of invincibility. Nothing bad's going to happen to right. me. Sure. I can handle it. This is fascinating to me. I, I, I would love to be able to continue this conversation because, uh, and by the way, we really appreciate you driving down from yeah, Orange thank County. You. Thank oh, you so much. My pleasure. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, really interesting, though, because you, you just, again, three daughters, they were all totally freaked out by the whole thing. Oh. And they were really scared, you know, wanted to sleep in my room with me. Oh. Um, it, it just was, it's just a very sad thing. The good news in all of it is, ultimately. At least she is safe. Yeah. You know? All right. Dr. G, what a pleasure. Thank yeah, you thank so you. much. Thank you just so much. Fantastic. Thank you.